Right, here we are. <laughs> there it is. Okay, See nice you later. Mwah. <laughs> Thank you. Good, how are you? Oh, nice to meet so you. So great to meet you. Come Thank on you in. for having me. My name is DJ Polly D, and Tyler may know me from DJing all over the world, or may know me from Jersey Shore. Oh, I recognize you funny enough. Oh, I'm <laughs> glad. Awesome. I was wondering if you would. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm excited to do this. Come on in, I'm excited too. Awesome. This is my first reading ever. I mean, I have palm readings before, and they've came to be true. So I'm thinking that this is way better than just a palm reading. So I believe heavily what Tyler does. I didn't know if you're gonna know me or not, but yes. I think it's so cool. I think that's the coolest aspect of it. You not knowing yeah. who you're reading. It's gotta be nerve wracking and it is every crazy. time. Because it could be anybody. So it's for me, if I don't recognize the client, that comes with some anxieties. And if yeah. I do, sometimes it does. It's like, so. so fascinating. Yeah. I know you're the man. <laughs> oh, I watch. I you're watch. sweet. Awesome. Yeah, you did Nicole too, so yes, she's yeah. the best. So Slinky told me that um, she was blown away by Tyler's reading. Um, who's Elaine? I can't. Oh my god. Okay, who would this be? Tell me. Tell me, tell me. That's his fiance. She couldn't believe how real it was, and um, she was super skeptical. Like, she's skeptical about everything, and he wowed her. So, I'm excited to see what he does for me. If your validations are like hers, it'll be interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so funny. So today, I'll just kind of let you know what's popping in. Um, usually in a reading, I always say that you know they might try to deliver 300 messages. Mm -hmm. If I'm lucky, I'll pick up on 30 of those messages. So wow. there might be some really significant uh, details that come through. Others might be smaller memories, references that um, just kind of validate that that person's coming through, that they have a recollection of their lives. Um, and that can be really interesting too. But um, usually, if we have objects for multiple people, I prefer to hold on to them one at a time. Okay. Um, and just because I'm holding on to an object that's connected to one person doesn't mean that they're necessarily guaranteed to come through. Anyone can come through when I hold on to an object. Got it. It just helps. Yeah. So um, I'll hold on to anything that you okay. brought today, just face down if there are any photos. Yeah, so it's photographs today. Awesome. Um, Perfect. Yes, yeah, same person. So. Great. Lovely. Okay, we'll see what pops in. I would love for Tyler to see if you see anything pop up on somebody that passed away. I'm really hoping for some closure, and I just hope that maybe he can give me some answers. Okay. There is an acknowledgement that I need to bring up, but it's coming mm -hmm. through on mom's side. There's a feeling of a timing of a passing, and then I have to reference to an acknowledgement of not having closure with everybody. And the feeling that kind of comes across is basically, in essence, it's like, I don't know if we were able to actually physically have that goodbye. And mm -hmm. there's this acknowledgement of the timing with it. Um, there is actually an acknowledgement of people being in a different state at the time mm -hmm. that he died, and there's a state divide line. Do you know about the state divide? Yeah, I mean, um, we're all spread all over the place. I got some family in North Carolina, ah, some right. family in Rhode Island, and, and, and like, um, I obviously moved out, but right. um, no one was able to get like real closure because my auntie Shirley, who was like the only one that with him when she when he passed, because right. he was very sick, he was in the hospital. Right. This looks like a situation that um, now yeah, would go unresolved to some extent um, in the context of, of this passing. There's very distinctly an M male name that I have to bring up. It's coming through on that side. Oh, wow. Uh, Who's the man with the M name? That's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. So if it's connected to my mother, my uncle Mike passed away, and that was right. That was tough. Yeah, it's really tough for her, tough for, tough for us, yeah. Right. That's crazy, an M, yeah, yeah. that's Mike, my uncle Mike. He is having me bring up a couple health issues. Do you know of anyone having an oxygen tank on your mom's side? He did. Okay, so it was him. So he had an oxygen tank, yeah. That's crazy you know all that. <laughs> That's a lot, I know. It's, so he is having me acknowledge this feeling of when I'm going to my legs and my feet, I don't feel like I have full circulatory like functionality. Basically from the knee down, yeah. he's showing me very little real feeling of mobility. Yeah, and it's in a wheelchair. My aunt is going to trip out when she hears this. <laughs> She's going to trip out. And he's joking about um, showing me symbol for Hot Wheels, <laughs> which is like a funny reference. I don't know what this is. Yeah, that's his wheelchair. I love it. That's but, cool. And he's showing me flames on the side. It's like a funny thing. And uh, there's a joke about this. <laughs> it's a funny character because I feel like, despite what he went through, mm -hmm. he still acknowledges trying to maintain a sense of humor, still trying to be oh kind of funny. Oh my God, still him. Trying to that's him to a T. Never lose that. And that was important for him. Now, here's this guy that was sick, definitely very ill, mm -hmm. but still so happy. He didn't want to make it about his sickness or him being ill, just a happy guy telling jokes. Right. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if he saw himself in you to some yeah, extent. Yeah, maybe. As well. For me, he liked me the most, I think. Yeah. <laughs> 
um, he acknowledges the one of the biggest senses of frustrations for some living people is actually a significant date also being around the time that he died. If there is a holiday around the time mm -hmm. frame of death or if there's a significant birthday, the feeling that comes across is like my death and then he's placing a significant date around mm -hmm. his passing as well. What is this? Christmas. Okay. Yeah, it was Christmas and uh, the family's so big and it's like, right. It, it, it put like a divide on who's gonna go to whose house now and everybody used to go together and it's like really right. separated now and, and that would have to be Christmas because yeah. it happened right around there and it was different having Christmas without him, you know? Right. The stuff that he knew, no one knew. The stuff about my Uncle Mike, the wheelchair, the, the oxygen tank, and the stuff that came to him was amazing. How do you know that stuff and how does that just pop up from some scribbles that he does? It's amazing to me. Fascinating, actually. So um, when my Uncle Mike died, it was tough seeing my Auntie Shirley go through that and, and just to be without him on the holidays. So right. it was a tough time for her and obviously for the whole family. When he comes through, he actually talked about in the event that he were to ever pass away what he would have wanted her to do. And he comes through very close to her, very connected to her, very mm -hmm. protective. But he is having me reference to moving on. He's referencing to romantically moving on. <laughs> That's crazy because, you know, she just started, like, the dating websites now. She just brought herself to do that, and the sisters, like, sort of are having her do that, you know? Right, and the feeling is, like, thumbs up with this. And, and she needs to know that by her continuing to be with anybody mm -hmm. in the event that that happens, that she's not forgetting him by being with somebody else. Mm -hmm. She's not dishonoring him by being with somebody else. She's embracing the best quality of life with a companion and he would want that for her. So okay. he does not want her to be alone. Okay, my Auntie Shirley would love to hear all this. She would love to hear all this. My Auntie Shirley, um, she lost my Uncle Mike and was devastated. They were super close. Um, she was the one that was taking care of him while he was sick and they've been through so much. I remember going to her home and still seeing his things there. And now here she is, she's stuck with still looking at those things. She doesn't want to throw them out. And what do you do and how do you live life without your significant other. So after today and talking with Tyler, I think it'll be a little sense of closure for her. Uh, do you have any questions or anything along those lines? Um, there was something I had to ask you uh, about was uh, these photos that I brought. Oh, great. So my friend Billy, um, my best friend in the whole entire world, he, uh, he passed away right. um, about 11 years ago. Yeah. Now this was like my best, best friend. And um, uh, we did everything together and stuff like that. And he passed in a motorcycle accident. Oh. And we were together all the time. And so it's like, I, this, I don't know if there's anything that you see, the way he died, how do you go living your life one day with him every single day, then all of a sudden you, you don't, you live life with, without him. And I, I don't talk to anybody about this because I'm a public figure, but I'm private in that aspect. Interesting, yeah. I mean, I can, I'll just kind of let you know if I feel anything that kind of fits that bill. And yeah. we'll just kind of go down a couple things real quick and see if anything connects. There is a visual that's coming through. Um, feeling is, if I were turning, I would be fine. But I'm up straight. <laughs> and this is the weird thing in the way this is coming across. Um, I don't have the time okay. to be able to correct anything that would have gone wrong. And the feeling is the center of balance isn't at the center of the vehicle. It's almost like if someone's veering or turning and it's more on one side or more on the other mm -hmm. and we can't adjust quick enough, the focus is almost like I don't have the balance. Okay. So I'm like, I'm shaking right now. I hear you say that. Um, that's exactly what happened. He was racing somebody and all he had to do was veer and he right. didn't. He went straight because he probably was going too fast. Ugh. You have to lean right. into the turns and for some, some reason he wasn't able to lean and he went straight into that van Ugh. and crashed right into it. Right. That's crazy that you know that. No one, this is, Ugh. you can't Google that if you right. wanted to. There's nothing. I'm so sorry, yeah, because it's all in this split Man, that's second. so crazy. Yeah, I'm so sorry that that happened. And this happened so quickly that nothing could have been done. The way that this kind of came across is there was a feeling of this happened so fast. Yeah. It would have been pointless to even go to a hospital because yeah. the feeling is like... He no. didn't go to the hospital. He was sitting on the scene. Yeah, from the get-go, it's like there's no... I know that this is so bad that there's nothing that's going to save me at a hospital. It's pointless. It's nothing, yeah. That was an emotional day. Oh, I bet. And when Billy passed away, it was very difficult for me to, to remain positive about the subject. I mean, the things that I would do with Billy, like riding the motorcycles, I immediately stopped that and I sold all my motorcycles. The most difficult thing was 
Spending so much time with someone, like every single day and doing everything together, and then so, just to one day, all of a sudden, that stopped. No warning to that happening, it just stopped. Thank you. That's, I don't know. Uh, good to keep in mind, there is a joke about, and these are two really kind of ambiguous references, so the way this kind of comes across is this reference to Kid Rock. Okay. Okay. Yes, Not this is his favorite was Kid Rock. Okay. I love Kid Rock. <laughs> That's a, insane. Kid Rock. I'm like, Kid Rock, I don't know what That's this is. That's crazy. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. And, and he's referencing to being honored, and it is in a motorcycle kind of a way. It's taking a ride for him. Oh and my god, yeah. We, up. Wow, we did a bike yep. runs for him. It's a yeah. whole group. It's like a little, little like, you know, intimate, personal thing. But the feeling yeah, we had is a little like, bike club, and we did a run for him. Yeah, and he knows that. The feeling is like, thank you for doing this. Yeah, and every single time he would never ride without me, right. I would never ride without him. And so um, I got a phone call one day, and he's like, oh, I'm going to go riding. Yeah. And just crazily, I, I didn't feel like riding that day. Right. And that's the day he went riding, and he, and he passed away. I feel I don't have any closure on that. I, I don't know right. how he feels, and, and I've gotten famous since then, and right. I can imagine what life would be like if he was still around. And ah, I see. When he came through, nothing would have made his circumstance different had you been there or not. And if anything, okay. I think the fact that he took a sense of happiness that you weren't there to see that happen, I mean, that was a, a good thing for him because he didn't want that to be the last way that you would have remembered him. Okay. So I think it's important for us to release any guilt that we might have you know, about these situations. It's hard. Yeah, no, I'm, it feels good knowing that because I always had that in the back of my mind. And... Yeah, for sure. <sighs> ah. The way this comes across basically is he, in life, didn't get the chance to have kids and have you know this whole situation of like, you know, I, I want to be able to have a family, I want to be able to have everything right. that I wish I could have had. And the feeling is, the time that I died prevented me from having everything I, I wanted to have. But you have the opportunity to have all of these things. Mm -hmm. And as you obtain them, he's gonna be there, kind of living vicariously through you. That's so cool. No doubt, he's still so deeply connected to you and, and still there, and I get a feeling of total peace. That's so cool, man, that's so cool. Well, losing Billy was very difficult for me. I felt like my whole world just crushed. I never experienced a death with somebody that close to me. And then to talk to a medium like Tyler, and him knowing more information than anybody else, I'm just thankful to get that closure. Thank you so much for today. This no, has thank been you. This awesome. has been great. Yes. Like, this is so cool. Oh, Tyler has a gift. And Absolutely. how this stuff pops into his head, I don't know. It's unexplainable to me. But it did, and there's no explaining that. You just can't make this stuff up. So he's legit. Thank you. I'm still shaking. It's wild to me. <laughs> thank you. Take care. <laughs> Poof, that was wild. So wild. I can't believe how he got things some spot on. And he knew, I mean, this is stuff you can't Google. This is stuff that no one knows about myself. And he knew it. Like, I'm a believer. It was really dope. Thank you for having me. I am Ronnie Ortiz Magro, and Tyler probably recognized me from MTV's Jersey Shore. Oh, what a cool space. I know. I figured you want a drink. I'm ready for a party. I figured, you know, do it here. We might need a drink after this, you know? We'll see how the reading goes. Yeah, you'll see how the reading goes. <laughs> I saw that Jenny was on it, Nicole was on it. Who's Elaine? Stop! I can't. And I hit them up. Really great experience. Like, you probably, you know, clarify a lot of things for you. There. Have you seen the show before? Yes, I have seen the show before. I'm a very big fan. Awesome. I'm blessed to feel like I'm here to be a part of that. Likewise, absolutely. I'm a very religious person. I've always been skeptical about, you know, stuff like this. You know, I feel like it's gonna take a certain special person to really have that ability. And I would love for him to connect with some people that have passed on. I just wanna just do it so I can, the interview later on, I can just be like, that shit was legit. Like, you know? <laughs> Okay, so we'll kind of just see where we're naturally led. Okay. Las Vegas. It's weird. Um, you might end up getting a pull to Las Vegas. This is going to keep in mind. For some reason, they're showing Las Vegas. Like, I'm seeing it pretty clearly. Might not make any sense right now. I'm serious? Seriously. Las Vegas, Las Vegas keeps coming in. Like, I'm seeing the, the sign. That, that's just crazy because I literally just moved to Vegas, you know, this month, you know, so I've, it's been in my head, like, did I make the right move? Did I not make the right move? Like, which direction is it gonna go in? Well, that was a good decision. So they're having me talk about that area for some reason. They're having me talk about career. They're having me refer to, like, 
opportunities involving what people put in their bodies. I don't know what this is. It's like I'm taking something, I'm consuming it, or putting it in my body. It comes in and it would be something you have an opportunity to do. So just keep it in mind. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the best. I know matters. exactly what you're talking about. I really like the direction this is going. I think by 2018, we should have some clarification. So just because it's stalling a little bit. Yeah, it's taking longer than expected. It's okay. But I, I, like you said, an entrepreneur in uh, medical marijuana. So that's actually, I'm in the process right now of getting my license. And that's why you're saying it's, something's taking a little bit longer sure. than it's expected. And then you're saying something that's gonna be put into somebody's yep. body. And I'm just like, yes. Just to hear Tyler say entrepreneur stuff. And I'm like, that's you know, always been my thing. It's gonna be a business where people put something in their body, wellness and stuff like that. And I was just like, Oftentimes it helps to have like objects around. So did you bring any objects? Yeah, I objects and photos and Awesome. Stuff. I love it. Great. There's that one. That one. Go there, there, there. I feel like I'm gonna hold on to this. Let's see. We'll see who comes through. <laughs> this is odd. Just check and see if there was like a funny story about someone being under the influence of alcohol, and like, I feel like I go from a high point to a low point, but it's not falling on the ground, it's like falling from a higher height. <laughs> so it's coming in and it's like a memory of a situation where I don't know if someone's like drunk and they're like, well, but I'm like falling, like I'm not like, just like tripping. No. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about, that's so funny. So what would be the relevance of that story? Uh, that's my buddy Brandon. He actually just passed away uh, last week and uh, we had a memorial for him on Tuesday actually. I just found out the other day, when they were younger, he was uh, hanging out on the roof with his friends, and I guess like, you know, he was running from the cops or whatever, and he would jump on his neighbor's roof, and he went through the skylight, and he landed in the bed right, with, with, with the couple. They were in bed, so he like, fell through the skylight and like broke his leg and stuff like that, and he was all messed up, and like, yeah, so it's just, right. yeah. <laughs> so everyone was at the memorial, and we all celebrated his life, and, and that's where I heard the story of where he fell. And when Tyler brought up somebody falling, you know, from a high thing, and he said he was laughing about it, you know, and it's something that I, I just learned the other day at the memorial. And for Brandon showing up today definitely meant a lot because it just shows that we were really good friends, you know, so. They're having me talk about the men, like the males, and they're connecting it to this, ob this for some reason. Why would they bring, be bringing up multiple males connected to this, like three or four? In the photo, there's multiple. Okay, uh, cool. Guys. It's all, actually all guys in the photo. Oh, That's nice. The only image that's coming through that seems incredibly important is that they're showing me my symbol for the response time. And this is having me talk about an incident. This individual is having me acknowledge people wondering if they were in pain in the last moments of their life. We need to know that this individual's soul left their body before they were able to really take on the physical side of actually what transitioned them. This is odd. Um, this is interesting. The way this comes through is a feeling of like, I left before I had to feel this physical pain. Wow. There's a very strong feeling with this of people being worried of like, to the extent that this person suffered, making people lack closure almost. That's good. Wow. Yeah, his soul left uh, before, you know, the physical side of things kicked in. Oh uh, yeah, that one uh, is uh, my cousin, Chris. He was, uh, uh, died about seven years ago, eight years ago. He was young, like 22, 23. And he was actually stabbed. That's how he passed away. That was always something that we wondered. Like, he was at a pool hall, and I guess something happened at the pool hall, and the group of guys left, and he thought that it was just whatever, and, and I guess, they followed him to his car afterwards and they, they got him in his car. Obviously when you lose a family member, it's gonna hurt, but when they're taken from you, it's even worse. And the way that he was taken from us is like, we wanna make sure he didn't go through any pain. I just wanted to make sure that he didn't suffer and like lay there for hours and like, you know, just go through so much pain. It's good to know that he left his body and he just, he, he already just was gone before he had to deal with that. Do you have any male A, name, a names that you can think of? Like Al or Anthony or it's like A male. 
keeps coming in. His brother's name is Anthony. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. His, his older brother's name is Anthony, my cousin. Yeah. I got you. So it's just their way of kind of bundling It's actually in the photo. Oh, I love it. Look at that. Very cool. Well, on that note, you could explain. Yeah, that one was with my, my cousin Chris. Right. And then the one next to him is his brother Anthony, and that's where Anthony right. came into play. Well, I'm definitely going to tell all my cousins and stuff that they would love to hear the fact that he didn't suffer because that was always something that was on our minds. You know, it's like his soul knew the second that it happened there wasn't going to be no hospital or coming back. Like, it knew, like, this is it. Like, let me just go. Well, I'm so glad you were open to doing this. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank well, Tyler, you so thank much. Thank you so much for the validation and, you know, the opportunity and everything. Mm. I'm in a hub of emotions right now, you know, I, I, I don't really know what to feel. I'm still processing it right now, you know, and I think it's going to be a little bit for it to settle in for sure. You walk past that building space, you can tell Snooky is there. He has the signage. It smells like Snooky. It looks like Snooky. It's just full Snooky. <laughs> Hello, stranger. Hello. How are you? How are you? Oh my gosh. Nice to see you. Congratulations. This yeah, my new amazing. store. How cute is it? I literally have been doing this since I last saw you. I actually wanted you to come to Jersey because I want you to talk to one of my friends. Fabulous. Yes. When Snooky told me that we were headed to read one of her friends, I was actually honored that she thought of me when it came to this. I have seen Snooky for years. We've gone way back. So to be able to actually help a friend of hers is really cool. Yeah, I'm super excited for this. So make sure you I'm gonna like get your together. Exactly. I'm gonna like yeah. line up all my mental chakras. All right, where's our ride? Oh, there it is. Let's see. Oh, it's, it's a modest ride. ride. <laughs> While you're in Jersey, this is what we ride around. I'm not telling you where we're going. Though. Okay, cool. I it's like in mystery. Jersey. Okay. But I'm not telling you where. Cool. All right. Well, I'm, I'm used to get mystery. comfortable. Get it's gonna be a, a little, These cheeks a are little here. ride. You're ready. You were one of my first readings yes. that I ever did on the show, and I was like so nervous. Um, who's Elaine? Stop! <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. Are you 21 yet? 22. Yeah. I feel like when I met you, you weren't. I was like age. 19. I feel like Baby. I've Oh my god. Time flies. It really does. I was like, you want a drink, and you were like, I'm not old enough. Yep. That's right. <laughs> We have like 10 minutes probably before they're here and before we get started. Snooky, she's texting me. Oh, she is? Well, my name is Mike The Situation Sorrentino, and Tyler Henry might know me from a show called The Jersey Shore. Um, also, most recently, we're filming Jersey Shore Family Vacation, and a number of my friends have already done readings with Tyler, Holly D, Wow, Ronnie, and I'm so excited to uh, invite Tyler here today to do my reading. Thank you so Thank much you. for setting this up. Duh. I've been looking forward to this. Oh, I've heard yeah. such awesome things about you. She raves about you, and uh -huh. I'm so excited that uh, you're finally here. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Nicole gave me a ring, and she's like, Mike, listen, um, I want to introduce you to Tyler Henry. He did my reading. He was so awesome. I want you to meet him, and we're going to do it at the Jersey Shore house. And I was like, dope. You can't get any more Jersey than this. So this is the living room awesome. where most of the fights happen. Now, has this room changed much since filming? Or no, no, it no it it's much. still the wow. same. It still smells the same. Yeah, yeah it smells like <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> You're so crazy. I think this is the most perfect place to do a reading because this has been our house for the past 10 years. I think Tyler's really going to get some good vibes out here. This is the duck phone. Yes. Oh, uh, the infamous duck phone. Yeah. Yep. There also is our dinner table. We just had a food fight the other day. Yes. That's the table yes. to have a food fight at. <laughs> Maybe just go upstairs real quick. Yeah. 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 This used to be Mike's room, MVP. Polly's bed, Vinny's bed, and my bed. Wow. Yes. And then next door, you want to do the, the honors? Room? Yeah. You do the honors. You were in there more than me. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. This right here is the smush room. Wow. Now, technically, this would be the room that you brought any of your um, lovers. Yes. Ah, uh, copy that. Yes. Well, we also had good memories, like doing barbecues, yes. sitting down, uh -huh. having yeah. heart to heart. Yeah. 
Oh, let's do our reading. <laughs> All right. We're going to sit right here. I'm going to go watch. Good luck. Love All you. All right. Send the missus out if we need. Yeah. <laughs> Today, watching backstage is going to be my sister, Snooki, my fiance, Lauren Pesh, and her family. And I'm um, so excited that it's my turn. You have tissues? No. I you have tissues? <laughs> I have tissues. I am a believer. I do believe in energy. I do believe in mediums. I feel like you're the only person on the show, or one of the few yes, that I haven't one read of the yet. Few, yeah, I've seen all of the episodes. Oh, nice. Uh, and myself and Mrs. Situation are big fans. Oh, thank you so much. I'm excited today to see what comes through, and um, there's messages that might come through for her as well. So. Yeah. So the way that I work is basically I just scribble, and throughout the duration of this reading, my job is just to communicate anything that I see, hear, mm -hmm. and, and feel. I feel like right now in Mike's life, he really needs this reading because there's a lot of going on. Well, what we can do too is we can talk about personal life. If you have any questions, um, is there anything that comes to mind? Um, well, my life is very public, yep. as you know. Yeah. This particular month, it's been you know very hard, only because I had this situation, a legal battle in the news, which was very uncomfortable. Now, obviously, being in the media, I know what you've been going through recently. Yes. And I'm so sorry I happened to go through that. What I would say is, I, I think there's going to be opportunities for leniency to be shown. And I, I really think that in the long run, I'm not, I'm not worried about you. I think okay. you're gonna be fine. I think you're gonna be good. Um, yeah, I'm really good about it. The feeling is that there will be some opportunities for it to not be like that bad of a situation. The feeling is like showing, it keeps seeing leniency keeps coming through. Oh, wow, well, okay. So, it's yeah, just, no, no, that is a possibility in my situation. Yeah, I, I don't think this is going to be a, a world ending thing. It's just a little bump of the road, and I feel like you're gonna get through it resiliently. Go ahead. That makes me happy. Uh, I'm seeing lace. It's always in reference to wedding. Do you have a date planned? It took us some time to put the date only because I had this situation um, in the news, which, oh, okay. you, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of tying that into like the love life thing and the feeling with this is like, pull the trigger, like you're good. Like uh, do this, yeah. do it, you're good. The feeling is like, we're, we're fine. But I feel very excited about this. Interesting. They are having me talk about dad's side. They are referencing to an older male. I'm trying to figure out what this is. They keep giving me an F, and to me, that's usually referencing to an F name, but they're putting this in multiple capacities, like not just one. Oh, wow. Like, I'm seeing this name repeating in some way, so. Um, yeah, that was from my father's uh, father. Okay. His, his name's Frank, and so is my father's name is Frank. It's Frank as well. And also my brother's name is Frank. Gotcha. So is your paternal grandfather passed? Or is yes. He? Okay. So I feel like I have to highlight him, but he keeps showing me a symbol for stubbornness, which always is, it's a donkey. <laughs> He's showing me like a little way out. <laughs> yeah. And, and really in the way this comes through, there's such a sense of pride for you kind of breaking that cycle. Because there is some cycles of behavior. Oh, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely generation. broke the cycle. Yeah, you broke the cycle. I definitely so. broke the cycle. I put a lot of work in the past couple of years to change every single aspect of myself. For my grandfather to know that I have changed my life, it was really cool for him to validate that. So with that, um, I'm just gonna take an object. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just check and see, this is weird, but um, this is connected to this person. There's a situation involving someone who basically just dropping dead. Like a situation where someone has no real insight into the fact they're gonna die. I feel like if any men would have just died at a very bad time. My brother's rosary bees. Stop it. They're having me talk about a response time, how fast one would help someone. They're just putting a big red X through it and it's like, it doesn't matter. The way I would describe this is, is like, okay, if I had my house, for example, and I lived in my house, and I call 911, I'm just using this as an example, and someone comes over, but I don't know these people, so like not family, not friends, 
it's strangers they're referencing to, but there's a feeling of like, I don't know these people well enough for, yes. for me to trust them to yes, help me. exactly. And so, well, could have anyone else done anything? It's like, no, it's all yeah, good, and, it's and, okay. Uh, yeah. It was a halfway house that they were living in. Gotcha. So that kind of makes sense with the people that were also living in the house. Right. They're good. Like, I don't feel like anything could have been done differently. But this person does acknowledge, um, like, again, being at peace and being okay. Yeah. yeah that's kind of that feeling, so. From their perspective, there really is this kind of sense of acceptance. So this was a pretty profound object. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yes. That, and that is my fiance's uh, brother. Gotcha. Lauren's younger brother tragically passed um, in his 20s from an overdose in a uh, sober house. And it was very unexpected. We expected to see him, you know, the next day. I had spoken to him on the phone the night you know, before, and I told him, you know, give your family, your family's worried about you. And then the next day, he just passed. There she oh, is. Hi. Hi, <laughs> How's it going? I have to oh, give you a hug. Oh, my God. I was watching you. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, is... And there was so much stuff. So my brother's name was Christopher, mm -hmm. and he was 25 when he passed. He actually passed five years ago today. Oh, my God. Wow. He was struggling with his recovery. He was sober for, I think he was sober for about a month before, or two months before um, he had passed, and then he relapsed. But he was living in a sober house. He wasn't living with any family or anyone he knew, um, definitely not friends or people he felt safe or comfortable mm -hmm. around. It definitely was, I think, reassuring to my mom that you had brought that up, that it was his time no matter what. Mm -hmm. If it's someone's time, it's someone's time. Mm -hmm. I always say readings aren't a cure for grief, but they let us know at least that our loved ones are still connected to us, they're right. still around yeah. in some way, and they're in a better place. We were all hoping that, that, that a message would come through, and a message did come through. I believe that my fiance, her family, and myself can move forward now and uh, be comforted that uh, there's nothing anyone else could have done. How'd it go? Hey. Was it good? It went great. Thank yeah. you so much. I was due for some good news. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so much to look forward to. Thank you. I think the reading overall went amazing. Mike almost cried, I could tell, but I feel like he needed to hear what Tyler told him today. Um, you know what? I'm very blessed and grateful to have um, like best friends that I can actually really call family. Right. And what people see on that show, and I think what's why it's so popular, is because we really have a genuine bond. Right. We are practically like brothers and sisters, and it has helped me get through some of the tough times in the past couple years. And the past couple years, I've, I've desperately worked to be the best version of myself. Five years ago, when I was partying on the Jersey Shore, and one of the wildest castmates, I'm very proud of myself, proud of my progress. I'm now sober almost three years in, in December. Right. For Tyler to bring up a message from my brother-in-law, it validates uh, my path in life right now. You know, I'm helping people that suffer from a, the disease of addiction. I partnered with a, a local rehab in New Jersey for a scholarship program for people that cannot pay for treatment. It was a pleasure to meet you. Well, you, uh, well, you know it. It was very comforting that Tyler said that, you know, your future is very bright. So good to see you. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I worked that. Woo! Uh, that was pretty awesome. Whew. I am blown away by how synchronistic that reading was. He brought objects that weren't even for him, and the loved one whose anniversary of their death was today came through. Like, you can't make that up. That's crazy.